thank you for inviting me here first of all I really enjoy being in Jordan it's my fourth time here and it has been amazing every time um, well I must say that we were really blessed with everything and and we managed to shoot everything according to the plans uh, and even the uh, pandemic couldn't stop mm. us luckily mm. although there were a few times where it could have happened nearly um, uh, since we lost a couple of crew members for for the disease but we could replace them and everyone else was healthy and we had really good uh, weather conditions so we we could escape all the sandstorms and you know anything that could have gone wrong and uh, yeah we were really very lucky and actually to ironically um, it helped us that uh, there were very few tourists around mm -hmm. because we realized that the desert echoes and the sound travels very far and uh, it would have been impossible to record the sound mm -hmm. when there were you know a lot of people around so mm -hmm. we were really very lucky the royal film commission has issued protocols for filming during covid how did it go without the help of royal film commission we could not have done it i mean first of all even to get into the country to get a you know uh, um, uh, permission to shoot um, during the lockdown and we, we, we it would not have been able to to stick to the schedule mm. or to, to do the shoot at all mm. with the, without the help of Royal Film Commission. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And, and yeah, of course, we followed all their rules and it was a very smooth collaboration and they visited the set and saw that we are really following the rules. I know I'm not wearing a mask now, but you know, I'm, I'm not working now, so <laughs> I don't lo longer have to follow the rules. <laughs> I'm wearing a mask for you, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'd, why did you choose Jordan um, initially for this movie? The film is set in Sinai, uh, uh, Egypt, and uh, well, because it's very, very complicated to shoot in Sinai, and um, the director is very uh, precise about what she wants because she has lived and traveled in Sinai for months, many months, and um, you know, and then she, we were looking for alternatives where we could shoot it so it would look like Egypt. And um, the closest um, the director was, you know, happy to go was Jordan. And she really says that the desert looks very similar and the people, the Bedouins look very similar. And uh, so, uh, yeah, she refused to go to Morocco, for instance, or anywhere else. So um, that was, so basically she put me in front of her. One fact. option. <laughs> option, yeah, there is just one way or like my way or highway situation. <laughs> So, and I then started working on finding the partners in Jordan and uh, it has been a long road, but uh, yeah, now I can say that the people I work with here are really my friends and uh, yeah, I'm, I would be happy to come back. I hope you will. So it went well with the crew, did it? With the local crew? Yeah, especially I would like to, as a producer, I would really like to thank the, uh, uh, the production side of it. it uh, everything ran really smoothly and, um, and uh, yeah, nothing was ever uh, delayed or stopped or, you know, I, I, normally I'm the one who has to do this. And now it was a little bit like a vacation for me in that sense, because I was like, everything is organized and I don't have to do anything about it so uh, yeah it was very very good and and the um, artistic team of course is also very professional they have a lot of experience on big movies so uh, and and what i understood from them uh, talking like behind the scene is that they were actually glad to do a small movie for a change <laughs> this is your fourth uh, film with kadri yes correct uh, you you're becoming it's just like is it normal to have always the same director working with you uh, i think it's a european art house tradition mm. that we uh, um and it, of course it's also the collaboration that it has actually worked out you know i, be, I know her uh since 2005 now um and um and we've been working together since and today we are like sisters you know we, we can really, uh, we, re we really match, we work well. And, and I'm, of course, as a producer, always looking for talent that I can continue working with beyond one film, you know, and especially the kind of uh, talent with a very um, individual vision. And Kadri definitely mm -hmm. has that. Mm -hmm. And she has proven that her films are unique and, uh, and the festivals have really picked them up. 
and uh, she's in a, in a true sense an auteur director, auteur or you know, so filmmaker. So um, yeah, and uh, we are actually working on her fifth film now together. So mm -hmm. it will not be the last one, <laughs> hopefully. I hope so. And then you have also established a production company in Estonia called Meteorit. And when I was googling, I just noticed that all the people in this production company were women. Do you consider yourself, or is it intentional? Is it deliberate? Is it just just happened like this? Do you think? Do you believe that women in filmmaking are different or different setups? I think in the beginning it kind of just happened like this because I met Kadri and we started working and it worked out. But then uh, the the longer I worked in the business and in the industry, I realized that really the women are very underrepresented, and it's still very very hard for good uh, strong. Uh, a very unique um, stories with strong female characters or written by women to get through to any financing although they claim that it's changing but uh, actually it's not so it's 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 uh, it's still a very masculine industry and um, yeah but I, I, I like challenge mm. <laughs> so and I thought you know if I'm not doing it who's doing it a, a man's not gonna do it so uh, mm. And, and I kind of uh, really enjoy uh, doing these films because I am a woman. And it, for me, it's the easiest to tell the story of a woman or understand the story of a woman. It's very difficult for me to put myself in the, in the male shoes. I can try that, but then the character probably becomes a cliche, mm. you know, <laughs> like most of the women in men, mm. men's films. Mm. So, uh, yeah. No, yeah, I kind of... Uh, over the years I have uh, taken it as, as my main focus. When you say it's a masculine industry, what's masculine about it? It's, it's everything. It's, it's up to the way, way that the most distributor, distributors who work in the very uh, kind of the top end of the industry, who actually pick the films to be shown to the audience, are men. It's, yeah, it's almost 90-90%. It's, it's very few women in the distribution. So uh, basically, Producers have to cater for the distributor if the distributor is a man who picks films of his own taste mm. Then you know the producers will have to produce the films mm. that they like so It's kind of like a vicious circle mm. in a way and also of course uh, there are men uh, they go more uh, They maybe want to express themselves more through film and it's it's kind of it's a very uh, harsh uh, environment for a woman especially if a woman wants to have a family on the side so it's it's like uh, yeah so it's it's often uh, girls who go to the film school they end up not picking films because they decide to have a family instead mm -hmm. and that's where they where it ends which is sad